And currently you're a tenth in the nation in passing yards and uh, you've thrown no interceptions. I, I'm just curious, how have you seen your game go to the next level early this season? Um, uh, you know, I would just say, you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, my lines are doing a great job uh, of blocking for me. My receivers are making plays for me. Running backs are making plays for me. Um, there, there are so many things that 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 go into that. Our coach getting us in good plays, um, and just comes down to to me executing and 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 trusting um, my preparation, my my teammates, and there's just so much that goes into that stuff. And you know, uh, after after week one, um, like we we've, we've talked about before, there's three or four plays that. Um, I wish I could have had back just being a couple inches off on some throws, but uh, you know, I just think going into the to the Oklahoma game, you know, it was just about focusing on one play at a time um, and, and just understanding that uh, it, you know it's not going to be perfect, you know, and there's going to be throws that I may miss or may get dropped or may get tipped or I may get sacked. There's so many things that it, it's, it's part of the part of the game, um, and just having a short term memory and. Uh, clearing it out whenever you know something really good happens or something really bad happens, um, and and I think that's that's a a big 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 thing for me. Um, and then just also understanding in our offense that we take pride in in winning the the turnover margin. Uh, so taking care of the football, seeing in front of my throws, understanding the defense and who's who's the placeholders in certain situations, and being able to protect the football is is a big part of our our game plan and in in our football team. You're you're on the verge of 5,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards in your career. When you break it down, what makes Skylar Thompson a dangerous quarterback? Uh, I think that I, I think that you know I can I can do both, and um, I, I I can can beat you with my feet. I can extend plays um, if things break down. Um, I, I I can distribute the ball uh, in a lot of different ways. I think makes our makes our offense versatile and uh, hard to defend um, because we can do so much with our quarterback run game and uh, scramble and, and drop back play action. There's so many different aspects to our, our offense that I feel like fit my my ability and, and my skill set. And uh, the coaches do an unbelievable job of, of putting me in great situations to execute. And, um, you know, I just have a lot of fun, have a lot of fun out there and love this game of football and just – try to take advantage of every opportunity that I get to go make plays and, and have fun and, and win football games. Thanks, Skyler. Good luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kels? Hey, Skyler, congrats again on Saturday. Thank you. Um, I, given how that second half unfolded with you guys just going one big play after another, I was wondering if that showed you that I know as much as you guys love, you know, having 15 play drives, if maybe that's more of something you can incorporate on a regular basis. The quick strike stuff. Yeah, I, it, well, I'll tell you what. You look back at those big plays; they're they're not really down the field throws, um, other than the, the Mosey um, play, that, which was a, a busted coverage. But you know, the, the big play to Deuce was just simple, just option out of the backfield and uh, throwing it for seven yards and him going seventy. Um, I, I think the the big thing for us is understanding that um, we have players that can make plays and extend plays, and uh, we can go downfield. Uh, and uh, we got guys that can turn a like like I just said a seven yard five yard throw into a into a eighty yard touchdown or whatever the case may be, um, but I, you know I, I just think it's big for us and our offense to to, to continue just um, to find ways to to put pressure on defenses and take what they're giving us. You know, there's there's so many different aspects, and you know going into a going into a a game, you know teams are are prepping for us and trying to take away you know, what we're good at or what, you know, they think are, you know, scare them, whatever the case may be. Um, and we just got to continue just to understand that, digest that, and then uh, take what the defense gives us. If it's if it's big plays or, like you said, a 15-play drive, that's what we got to do to to score touchdowns. From the press box, it seemed like the offensive line really started to click. Oh, I don't know. About the same time you guys started your comeback there in the second half, what was it like playing behind them? Could you sense the improvement uh, – down on the field? Yeah, oh, 100%. You know, the, just like I've said many times, they're, they're a young group um, that hadn't had a lot of experience coming into the season. I knew that, you know, they're, they're all talented. They're really 
good football players, and they're just going to get better as the season goes and the more reps they get. And you could you could feel that in that game that, you know, they're starting to click, starting to get some continuity and, and getting confidence, you know. And I think it, th that's a – it's an awesome feeling for me, uh, feeling that and seeing that. You know, those guys are, are out there playing hard, having fun, smiling, laughing. Um, you know, you can tell they're comfortable and they're, they're not uptight and nervous. You know, I think that's that's the biggest thing that that really impresses me about these guys. And I just have a lot of fun playing with them, man. I mean, they, they take care of me. When I get knocked down or get hit. They're the first guys there to pick me up and, you know, <laughs> apologize for letting me get hit like that. And I'm just like, man, come on. You don't got to apologize. I understand that's, that's just part of it. But it just goes to show how much uh, they care about me and, you know, I, I care about those guys and just have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with them and they're just going to continue to get better, get better. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that happen and being part of it. And also having Noah Johnson is um, very, very big and all that. He does a great job up there leading those guys and um, getting those guys going. So give my, my hat off to Noah for sure. Go ahead, Michael. Yes, Skyler, in, in what specific area have you made the biggest improvement from the end of last season to uh, to right now? Um, you know, I, I think understanding, um, you know, my, my pocket presence, understanding where my protection's at, being able to step up, um, not get flustered and, and get out of there too quickly. When I, when I feel pressure, being able to step into throws, knowing I'm about to get hit um, is a, was a big leap for me and something that I focused on a lot this offseason. And I felt like so far this year, I've, I've done, a, done a good job of that. Uh, there was one throw to Malik this past game that I hung in there in the pocket and was moving to my left and um, threw it behind him a little bit. And if I have a more accurate throw, we probably have a touchdown. Um, luckily, the next play, we threw a touchdown to, to Jabashin. But um, there's still areas that you know I, I still want to get better at and, and, and improve on. But I would, I would say that would be my answer, my pocket presence and understanding you know, my protections and where I'm protected at. you feel like you're at the same level with receivers given the kind of limited amount of, of uh, prep time that you've had in the offseason? Yeah, I feel like we're on we're on a great, great, great page right now. Um, we've never made an excuse of the lack of, of time we've been able to spend together um, for that being a reason for us to not be clicking where the, you know, that, that – that's not an excuse for us, and it hasn't been, and it never will be. Um, we've done a great job of, of meeting, watching film, getting extra throws after practice, doing everything we can right now uh, to be be prepared and uh, ready to go on Saturdays. And uh, you know, I, I have a lot of confidence in our receiving core. We we got a lot of depth. We got seven or eight guys that can get in there and make plays, and um, they all understand their role. They understand that you know there's only one football to go around. And, you know, I just got to focus on my role, uh, my route, and, you know, trust the progression, trust my progression, trust the, the O-line. And, you know, those guys are, are doing a great job. And uh, I, I love playing with them because I'm telling you, just like we saw this weekend, um, we, we got guys that can make big plays. And that, as, as a quarterback, that gives me a lot of confidence and, and, and makes my job easy. I appreciate it. Sully. Hey, Skylar, you know, you just have this ability in the biggest games and the biggest moments just kind of take it to that next level. Is that something that you kind of realized early on in your playing career, maybe like high school or even before that, just growing up? And how do you kind of embrace that and run with it throughout your career? Yeah, I, I knew that whenever I was in fourth grade playing in the championship game of basketball. Um, I played for a team called Legacy. Um, and we were playing the defenders who um, uh, were from Kansas, but we were playing in, in a championship game of a tournament one weekend and went into uh, overtime. And I had a game winning or game tying shot to go into overtime uh, and played, played a really good game. Um, but I think that's when I first sensed like, you know, I always knew I was a competitive kid. I mean, I used to cry when I my sister beat me in checkers when I was three years old. I mean, that this is how I've been my whole life. But um, I would say, like, 
that's not, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, I remember that that basketball game that uh, I love love big games um, and and opportunities to to prove myself. But um, throughout the whole my whole course in my career, um, I've always uh, looked forward to big games. You know, in high school, that was always playing Staley. Staley was always our our arch rival that always came down to one play to that decided the game. And uh, we always were fortunate to come out and get a win in those situations. And I was able to most of the time make a play that decided the game. But, um, but yeah, I, I would say I've, I've always been, been a very competitive person. And uh, when, you know, I'm being doubted or, you know, you know, people are questioning me or not believing in me, that's when I'm at my best. And, um, you know, that's, that was kind of the situation this this past weekend, and it's just an opportunity to to go prove myself and to prove myself to to myself and my you know my family and the people in my circle that that I know believe in me and and know I can do it. And I think you know that's what I do it for. It's not anything outside of that. It doesn't matter. So, um, but yeah, I definitely I love love big games. I love the spotlight. I love having that pressure and and nobody giving us a chance to win and. Uh, that was my message to the football team uh, before the game this weekend. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm speaking for 100, 100 other guys down in the locker room saying they feel the same way. This, this is what we've, what we've, why we came to K-State. It's why you, why you want to be a K-State Wildcat to, to have opportunities to be the underdog and, and to win games like that. Definitely. And are there any athletes that you look at growing up, football, basketball, I guess even checkers there, that you kind of liked them and how they played and said, I want to be like that? Yeah, my, that person for me was Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, yeah, obviously I never got to, to watch him play, but um, I grew up watching Michael Jordan. Um, had a movie called Come Fly With Me that was kind of his Michael Jordan story of through high school, uh, throughout his whole career that I literally watched on repeat as a kid. Uh, you know, that, that's how I wanted to be. I wanted to be Michael Jordan. I would I would go down to my basement and, and tape a, th- a free throw line on my little tie school and, and – just try to jump from the free throw line all day and, and, and be like Michael Jordan or hit the game winning shot. And, you know, that, 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 that's who I look up to, um, have always looked up to. And, you know, when that documentary came out and during quarantine, um, it just solidified to me even more why, why, you know, I, I look up to him and want to be like Michael Jordan. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, his demeanor, his, the way he carries himself in behind the scenes, the way that he works and, uh, you know, leads, uh, I, th- I think just opened my eyes so much uh, during during that documentary. But, yeah, that, that's definitely, you know, not a football player. But, um, but, yeah, definitely Michael Jordan.